And the guidance that's not there, no mandate on ventilation or sanitation in school buildings. A lot of confusing stuff. Joining me now is NBC News correspondent Heidi Presbella, who is in Philadelphia, and Brown University professor of economics known to parents everywhere, Emily Oster. She's the author of the book Crib Sheet, a data-driven guide to better, more relaxed parenting from birth to preschool. Ladies, welcome. Um, uh, Heidi, start with start us off. What exactly are parents telling you out there? What are they doing in Philly? The guidelines here aren't really affecting the debate and the tensions here in Philly, Katie, because two thirds of the schools here have poor ventilation that does not even meet basic industry standards, according to a recent independent report. In fact, over 30 of the schools here don't have any ventilation at all. And that is why the teachers who've been protesting say they'd rather stand out protesting in the frigid air than to go back into these schools before they're vaccinated. I'm standing outside Richmond Elementary School where the solution at this school and other schools across the city, temporary solution, is to purchase these plastic Walmart-type fans attached to plywood and duct tape. And that solution, Katie, is causing an absolute uproar among a number of teachers and parents. Take a listen. We are not at this point able to get enough information to uh, assess whether or not the buildings are safe, whether there is adequate ventilation. You asked about the fans. We need to find out what the uh, fans do. Do they make a difference? The fans are a way to introduce fresh air into 32 schools. And I must add, it's 32 of our 227 schools that do not have operating ventilation systems. And so we use the fans as a way to introduce fresh air into those spaces. So that was the superintendent, superintendent of Philadelphia schools. And he says, hey, maybe those 32 schools, they could just stay out virtually. But Katie, that doesn't answer the question about what about the poor ventilation and the others. So NBC did talk to an independent ventilation expert recommended. His organization was recommended by the CDC. And what he told us was that this is not just about Philadelphia. This is a nationwide problem, Katie. Last year, the GAO did a independent analysis and found that 36,000 schools across the U.S. are in dire need of ventilation upgrades or complete replacements. Now, the concerns about these fans are that they're not meant to be used in rain and snow, that there is not an exhaust system. And the independent experts we've talked to have said that's a risk for even spreading COVID. So at the heart of this is teachers are not vaccinated and you have these new variants spreading. They're very concerned at this time about the reckoning that this is going to force here with schools that have long needed major ventilation upgrades, Katie. So, Emily, the CDC guidance is confusing. They don't offer a lot of guidelines on things like the ventilation that Heidi just mentioned. Uh, but also, if you follow their guidelines, there are very few schools in this country, when you, take, when you take the totality of the schools out there, that can open five days a week in person. What do you make of what the data has told you uh, and the, the guidelines that the CDC is giving out? Okay, so I, I think there's a little bit of a disconnect because on the one hand, the CDC is saying, you know, we have not seen a lot of spread in schools. You, shot, you saw Dr. Walensky say exactly that. We're not seeing a lot of spread in schools. And, you know, we think schools are safe. And at the same time, the guidelines as written imply that basically 90% of the country is in what they refer to as, as the red zone in which uh, at least middle and high schools should be hybrid. Of course, many schools are open in those zones, including middle and high schools. And those are the places where they are saying there's not a lot of spread in schools based on the experience of the schools that are open, which according to the guidelines, maybe should not be open. So I think there's a little bit of a disconnect there. Uh, and, and sort of, I think what Heidi said really resonates, which is there's not much discussion at all of, of ventilation. And there are a lot of open questions about that in particular, even questions like, what about heat with filters? Are those good enough? And these are things that, that we could in principle answer, uh, but we didn't see much on in the report. So I think there, there's, you know, there, there are some things that are left to be answered by the, by the guidelines. So parents are looking at a lot of this data and they're saying, hey, listen, community spread, especially among younger children or, or, or spread within schools is, is minimal uh, at best. Um, almost non-existent between kids and that it's really between the parent or the teachers themselves if they're not wearing a mask. 
when parents look at that and they still see teachers unions saying or teachers saying, I don't want to come back to school. I guess, how do you sort through that? I mean, I, that, that creates a lot of anger between parents and, and the people who are who are in charge of their kids during the day. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, parents have been pretty good. They, we've all been pretty good about differentiating between teachers and teacher unions. And and I think that's that's important to keep to keep doing. But I think there is a lot of anger and, and frustration and, and a feeling of a bit of a movement of the goalposts among a lot of parents. Like, OK, now we show that these are safe. We're seeing minimal spread in schools. What, you know, what's it going to take? And I think, you know, now it's, it's the vaccines and the question of, well, after vaccines, what else will it be? And I think that's causing a lot of um, a lot of angst and, and stress. And, you know, I wrote about this this weekend, but I think people are looking into the fall and saying, well, are we not going to be even back in the fall? Like, I, you know, I, this is this is really, really damaging to my to my kid. And um, and, you know, I think the, the way forward there is really to try to to rebuild some of the trust that has been lost between teachers and administrators, between teachers and parents. Uh, to, to try to address some of the, the fear, the very real fear that's out there and help people sort of fight fear with, with data. I still find it remarkable. There seems to be things that money can solve. One of them is, is, is ventilation and filters within school. Money can solve um, that. They can solve getting more separation between kids. You can vaccinate teachers as a higher priority. It seems that there are ways to get to get at the heart of this problem. And it's still so surprising that we have kids out of school when when you take kids out of school and when you have parents forced to stay home with them and to teach them remotely. I mean, it's just it's part of the problem this whole society is facing and trying to get back to normal. Uh, Emily Oster, thank you so much for joining us. Heidi Presbella, thank you as well. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.